Good evening. As historians, we are trained to detach ourselves from the events of the past and attempt to maintain an unbiased perspective. For this week's discussion, I intend to lean heavily on conviction, devotion, and fury in an attempt to create an historical presentation on the interconnected nature of John Brown's vigilante abolitionism and the sermons of Congregationalist Minister Henry Ward Beecher to be given at Harpers Ferry National Historic Park as part of the annual At All Times Ready commemoration of John Brown's raid in October. To this end, this presentation, Beecher's Bibles, Conviction, Devotion, and Abolition, will highlight Henry Ward Beecher's influence on the direction of the abolitionist movement through the lens of John Brown's own struggles and conflicts. Much of Beecher's influence was chronicled as sermons published in the New York Tribune, the New York Daily Times, and the New York Times, as Beecher was pastor of Brooklyn's Plymouth Church. Moreover, this presentation is aimed specifically at emphasizing Beecher's personal convictions in a way only spoken word can accomplish, and to instill that same passion into the essence of John Brown's actions. I'll focus on two areas where Beecher's words and Brown's actions overlap, the Bleeding Kansas era and the Brown's Harper's Ferry Raid. The conflicts over slavery in Kansas during the mid-1850s became tantamount to a proxy war for Northern abolitionists. Through Henry Ward Beecher's support, these abolitionists began sending supplies to Kansas to fight proponents of slavery. One legendary incident involved cases of Sharp's rifles sent to Kansas hidden under 25 Bibles. In a sermon published in the February 8, 1856 New York Tribune, Beecher said that he believed that the Sharp rifle was a truly moral agency and that there were more moral power in one of those instruments so far as the slaveholders of Kansas were concerned than in a hundred Bibles, though he still sent the Bibles. In another sermon published in the April 4th, 1856 New York Daily Times, Beecher said, a friend of a friend and parishioner desires me to present you 25 copies of the Bible. This is the charter of all charters, the constitution of all constitutions, the source and the spring of Christian manliness. This book will be at the foundation of your state. It will teach you to defend them. The donor has caused to be inscribed upon them. Be ye steadfast and unmovable. These rifles would earn the nickname Beecher's Bibles and John Brown would be one of many to use them. Some would make their way to Harper's Ferry, Virginia, and were used in the assault by Brown on the United States Armory and Arsenal at Harper's Ferry. Brown's attempt to mobilize and arm enslaved Africans through the arsenal failed, and Brown and his followers ultimately gave their lives to their cause. From a sermon published in the November 28, 1859 edition of the New York Times, Five days before Brown was hanged, Beecher said, We take something of their suffering and their disgrace. And since it was through love of that that, that was right, they were urged to do wrong. And since it was their love of those bonds, what led them to war against the government and laws, we beseech thee, O God, that their lesser offense may be forgotten in the greatness of their better part. Of those abolitionists that remained silent or chose to do nothing in the wake of Brown's fight, Beecher said in a sermon published in the April 10th, 1860 edition of the New York Times, They are not merely cowards, but perjured cowards, every one of them, and some of them are apostates. They are educated to do better things and have gone back to apostasy under the paltry and bribery of interests. These are just snippets of a few of Beecher's sermons on abolition, and ProQuest Historical Newspapers offers a vast number of these sermons published over his time at Plymouth Church in Brooklyn, New York. Though this presentation is aimed as a one-off exhibit of Beecher's work related to John Brown, I believe careful review of Beecher's abolitionist sermons could, could inform and drive living history as a person interpreting Henry Ward Beecher either at Harpers Ferry or at the historical Plymouth Church in the Brooklyn Heights Historic District in New York. 
I'm eager to hear your reactions to plans for this event or your thoughts on Henry Ward Beecher's sermons. Thank you.